But look what they brought back. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogley's Guitar Show. In 1999, Gibson comes out with a new high-end SG known as the Supreme. It had a flame top, P90 pickups, really cool split diamond inlays similar to a Trini Lopez model adorned on an ebony fretboard, and it had a customs headstock overlay. Pretty fancy. One year later, in 2000, they came out with the humbucker version. And then the next change occurs in the year 2002, when the P90 gets discontinued, and they change the finish style more into a fade burst rather than your typical edge. There were so many cool colors on the initial SG Supremes, from a midnight blue to emerald burst, trans black, fire burst, lava burst, among many of others that you could find. And they went on for a few more years after that before they were just officially discontinued and kind of morphed into other models. The last time we've seen the SG Supreme name used was actually in 2016 when it adopted the Diablo top, where it's actually a carved top SG. You also saw it on like the Zoot Suits. The initial SG Supremes might not have been as popular as the introduced in 2003 Les Paul Supreme, but they're definitely a part of Gibson history that you need to know today as we unbox the 2024 Supreme. We're straight out of the box. Um... I'm noticing something's missing. <laughs> That's funny. We're, we're going to review this one today. We'll review that one the next day. So here is the new 2024 SG Supreme. Oh, that's evil looking. So first things first, we still have the flame maple top. That's not usually what an SG has. It makes that a little bit more unique. You've got the gold hardware, no pick guard at all. And you'll notice these have a whopping 24 frets. That's a full two octave scale. So you don't need any of those tenon covers or anything like that either. But you'll notice this time around, they changed up the inlay pattern. We no longer have the split diamonds. They went for the Les Paul Supreme style Super 400s to kind of simplify the lineup because they recently re birth the Les Paul Supreme in a more modern way. That's the official title of these, the Modern Supremes. But we also have a new name for the headstock veneer, a design that Gibson pulled out of their archives from the 1940s. They're calling it the chandelier, which honestly, it makes sense. I'm glad that we have something to call it now. But for me personally, I was never a huge fan of the original SG Supremes and the market never really made them go too crazy. So I'm curious how these will sell. But so far, this seems like a thicker SG than normal. They've definitely had to have had some heft to it. But it could just be an illusion because we have this whole maple top situation going on. Gives it a very interesting cross section. But Gibson is offering these in three colors. Two familiar ones, fire and trans ebony burst. And then this new one, wine red. Now I say new, because as far as I'm aware, it wasn't available on the old SG Supremes. But I was really, really hoping for the reissuing of the blue and green ones. But you know Gibson, they'll probably give it to us in a year or two. However, there is a Gibson.com exclusive where they give you a plain maple top, finish it in ebony, give you the three humbuckers. So it's just like the modern LP Supremes. And that's what we have in this case over here, but we'll see that in a separate episode. But all the models, regardless of status, are $3,499 brand new. And that's kind of the claim to fame for the Supreme series. They are Gibson USA produced, so you're not quite yet in the custom shop level, but they have just on the cusp of custom shop pricing. It's Gibson USA showing off what they can do. I was kind of surprised to see that it has a multi-pieced body though. It looks like three pieces on this one, but it's got cool wood grain at the same time. We don't have any fancy swept heels or anything. You know, it looks like they might have tried a little bit, but SGs are pretty good for those whole upper fret access anyways. It has a thin but yet rounded neck profile, but it feels like chunky for an SG, but not like too big. And then kind of an interesting truss rod cover here. So that's kind of first impressions there. We'll tear it apart on the workbench here in a second. But as far as other case candy goes, you get a basic leather Gibson strap, warranty info, case keys, Gibson app, and warranty card. Silica packet a blank truss rod cover in case you don't like the one that says Supreme, and a poker chip, owner's manual, polishing cloth, multi-tool with truss rod adjustment, and here's a sample of their hang tag, as well as the original box tag on this one. So far, seems promising, but let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs before we get to a playing sample. Inside the SG Supreme, what kind of pickups are we rocking here? Starting with our neck position, it's the Burst Bucker Rhythm Pro and Lead Pro in the bridge. They have the respective readings. Don't forget, you can actually coil split both of these pickups. But in plugging in to show the meters, I don't even have to measure this to tell you it's a thicker than usual SG. Look where the output jack is. I didn't realize that. 
it's on the edge. And we still have quite the room to spare on the top and bottom. It's about one and a half inches thick, even on custom shop flame top SGs. That's significantly chunkier. Well, that's actually cool for a few different reasons. If you're one of those guys that just can never jive with one of these SGs because of the whole neck dive situation, typically these chunkier bodied SGs are thick enough to prevent that from happening. And hey, I'm a Les Paul guy. I'm used to it being on the side. You don't have to worry about cracking the top or anything. I don't know why that never really caught my attention, but there you go. Or if you don't like how fancy it is, look for an 80s SG. They are also side jacks. Now it's important to note that the original Supremes did not have this feature. They were still top loaded. You could say they borrowed this from the 2016 SG Supreme and just didn't carve the top and left it with the side output jack. So kind of a cool blending of our specs. Here's a look inside our neck pickup cavity. It's a long neck tenon with a mahogany neck. You can see the maple cap for your truss rod route then the wine red staining on our maple top and mahogany body. It's kind of a cool cross section because they haven't fully routed through the maple top here until the wiring route where you can see the mahogany or like in your pickup legs. You can see that same phenomenon in the bridge pickup cavity, but it reads SGSU for SG Supreme. Well, that's a pretty sizable top. As far as the bridge and tailpiece, it's just a regular Nashville style done up in gold, advanced plated incorporated Brandon with a lightweight aluminum tailpiece, same company. Nothing against the other colors of the SG Supremes, but I think this wine red was a fantastic selection because when I think SG, I think red and having one of these evil looking tops to it. This is a great piece to document here. But again, no pick guards, screws or anything like that to mess with on this one. It certainly makes a statement. That's this profile right here where you can really see how chunky these things are. It almost comes up to like a huge point right there before it slopes down. This is a massively chunky SG. And I like how it gives the illusion that more than half of the guitar is maple as it continues a little bit past that halfway point. This is kind of your side profile shot of this while you're playing. Moving on from our two-piece maple top with three-piece mahogany body, we've got that mahogany neck with an ebony fretboard. Now, I'm really curious, uh, can anybody tell me why we keep getting these splotches in Gibson's ebony? For example, right here, there's like a water droplet mark. This example is far from the worst that I've seen, but it's something I've been noticing on all these modern collection guitars that have the ebony fretboards. It's present on almost every single one. So if you order one of these, just keep in mind, it's probably going to be there, but this is true mother of pearl material. But we've got the black side marker inlays. As far as tooling marks, it's about average. It seems they've been falling back to their old ways, like they're over rounding the edge. Can you clean it up with sandpaper? Yeah, to an extent. And we just saw this on the School of Rock SG too. It's always this fret nib that doesn't quite get formed. That's the other thing to note if you're trying to compare this to like the SG Modern. The SG Supreme actually has the full on fret nibs. And now that we know about the extra thick body, that's another way that they differ. Even though they look almost exactly identical, this is a compound radius fretboard. It's going to be a little bit more rounded over here, and then it gets flatter as it goes up the neck for easier soloing. But here's our neck specs. It's a pretty decently wide neck. And as far as the depth, it runs from about 0.8 to 0.9. Here's that neck profile of the first fret and the 12th fret. Nice rounded, but C shaped. Does feel like it fills up just a little bit more towards the higher fretting areas. Now our headstock. Chandelier has lots of nice different colors within it. I like that. It's like Aurora Borealis. That green just comes into play. Now let's talk about our truss rod. Everything's good there. You can see the finish got a little bit chewed up at the installation of the cover, but it gets covered. How do you guys feel about this? I don't like it. I think they could have did something different, but that's what's great. They give you a blank one in the case if that's your style. We've got the multiply binding along the headstock as well as all of our nice inlays. And these are locking tuners, something that the SG Modern does not currently have anymore. It launched with them, but then they changed it due to, I think, neck dive issues. Now we flip over to the back. There was a surprise in the control cavity. This one does not have a PCB. It is all hand wired. So that's something this has over the Les Paul Supreme, but that's the way they did the SG Modern. So it's not that surprising. Two push-pull pots, modern style, with your orange drop capacitors and the Gibson branded pots. And that's another spot where you can see how thick that maple top and mahogany body are. It's cool to have this extra area right there not routed out for the output jack, because that's right over here. Then we've got the large strap button and the other one at the horn. But you heard me right, this one is a three-piece body. 
first I was kind of turned off by that. I was like, uh-oh, Gibson's going to get hate, $3,500 guitar with three-piece body. But at least this one has, like, the cool figuring in the center and really heavy wood grain on the other ones. It makes it unique. You've got so many different layers of woods on this guitar. It kind of works. But I did have the shop look at the other ones that they had, and some of them were two-piece backs, so it's not all of them. But you also have to remember, the other two colors are solid backs. So that's also why I think the wine red one is the fantastic choice, because you can still see the beautiful wood grain on the back. Being such a chunky body, I'm surprised they didn't try to, like, slightly sculpt it in the neck area. Maybe carve it away a little bit right there or on the other side. I mean, they only have so much room here on the back of the body where the neck joins, but, you know, kind of like a Stratocaster, how they can sometimes have, like, additional cuts, like, from the Ultra series, they could have easily did that to the body right here, making it just a little bit easier to reach the full two-octave scale. But maybe they'll do that on a future model. But there's the back of the neck. Our full Locking Grover tuners in gold. And our serial number dating this one to late 2023. All said and done, it is quite chunky for an SG. Eight pounds, two ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how the wine red version sounds. So what's our verdict on neck dive? It's nice and level. It kind of just wants to sit right here, so if you like it jacked up like this, it does want to dive a bit. But what I find strange is I think the traditional strap button location would have been better on these, because then you could have it like that. But let's get to some tones. like those tones. That's the middle position both pickups split. Kind of sounds telly-like. It has more like a compressed modern tone. But the split kind of gets you into slightly more vintage. I like that, punchy. Middle position, just the bridge split. Still have that neck on full. Now that we know all about the new 2024 Gibson SG Supreme, what are my final thoughts? Honestly, I think I need more time to marinate on this because 
it's a lot different than I thought it was. Getting it in person, seeing how chunky it is, noticing that it actually has the side output jack. I was just expecting a reissue of the, you know, 2000-ish era ones that just happen to have different colors and a different inlay style. And technically this one's part of the modern collection, so those are the tones they're going after, and that's not exactly what I was hoping for on this. So for me, wasn't in love with the sounds out of it. However, if you have a different amp or a different playing style, you might enjoy it. So maybe try one of these out at a store at first because I could see SG lovers maybe not loving these because they are a little bit different despite looking very familiar in shape. But if you're a Les Paul guy who's always wanted an SG but could never really jive with their whole neck balancing issues that they sometimes have or you like the side output jack, I think this is a good in-betweener model. I think it's safe to say this is a gorgeous guitar. But all right, troglodytes, if you're interested in being the next owner of this one, you can find it for sale on my website, troglysguitarshow.com. Otherwise, enjoy your newfound guitar knowledge, and we will see you guys tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.